Hi, I'm Angelica. Welcome back to my channel. I am in my living room today. I'm sitting here real comfy with my water, my tea, my phone with some notes. I will be talking today about how to become a florist in 2023. So if you're looking to become a florist this year or looking to pursue this as a business or a hobby, I have a few tips and tricks here and there to share with you if you're looking to get started in the floral industry. So let's get started. I have a few notes here on my phone just to serve as a guide and keep me on track as to what I wanna to touch on. So the first thing that I noted is a can-do attitude. Can-do attitude is super important, especially in the beginning. It was for me, I come from like a very positivity background, like I am typically a very positive person when it comes to life. And so I think that this definitely served me because I had zero experience. I had never done a floral arrangement before, a centerpiece, a bridal bouquet, no kind of experience with flowers. The only experience that I had with flowers is probably the most common, which is you go to your grocery store, pick up a few flowers that you like, put them in a water vase, and that's literally it. So having a can-do attitude was definitely important because since I didn't have all of the answers and didn't know what I needed in order to get my business started or even creating my first floral arrangements when I was getting married, I definitely had to research a ton. So I think I should probably go back a little and let you know how I got started. So I got married in August of 2021 and when I was searching for a florist to provide me with the florals that I was looking for for my wedding, most florists were outside of my budget and so I thought like, I could do them myself and maximize the budget that I had for florals that way. Um, and so that's kind of like how I got started in the floral industry. I experimented with flowers for my own wedding. I loved the process and I kind of just dived in. And so I think a can-do attitude is super important because after starting my own Instagram account and kind of starting to build my own portfolio, with my own photos of my own wedding, um, I quickly realized that there was a ton of other floral designers in my area since Instagram was kind of suggesting similar content to what I was posting. And so that was a tad bit um, discouraging because I thought, oh, if these floral designers have this much more experience and create these beautiful, beautiful designs, then, you know, kind of what do I have to offer? However, as I kind of just kept moving forward, gaining a little bit more experience and learning more about flowers, I also was in the mindset that I was gonna just figure everything out. And if I didn't have the answers, I was gonna do the research or get educated on the topic or get educated on the flower types, which is what I, even till this day, struggle with. I definitely don't know all of the flower names that are available. Um, but yeah, just having a can-do attitude pushes you forward to figure out the answers that you don't know that you may want, that you may need, but you don't know in the moment. So just kind of pushing through that idea that if there are other designers in your area, which most likely if you live in a city, near a city or near a flower wholesale market, there is definitely gonna be a ton of other designers. However, what sets us apart from everybody else is that we do business in a very different way. So if you start your own flower business, you might have a different process that your clients will love and be attracted to, as well as the flower design that you provide your clients. You could give a floral recipe and the same floral ingredients to a ton of different designers, two different designers, 10, 100 different designers, and every single one will come up with a different floral design because of the way we create and our thought process in creating. I think that it's really important to also establish that community and kind of embrace those relationships with other floral designers if you do have a floral community in your area. Um, because that is gonna definitely allow you to have a conversation with other people that are experiencing the same thing that you are. I think it was very helpful for me to start freelancing as well because that kind of 
let me know that everybody was kind of in the same boat as far as figuring out pricing, different designs, different techniques, and kind of just moving the um, ball forward and being able to gain the experience, gain the momentum as to just learning everything I could about flowers. So can-do attitude, very important. Second point that I jotted down was start an online portfolio of some sort. That could be Instagram, TikTok, Pinterest, YouTube, any kind of like visual online portfolio that you could start. I would definitely suggest doing this. When I first started my business, I immediately just started an Instagram account. I showcased the wedding florals that I provided for my own wedding. And I wrote down like, I don't know, like a paragraph or two as to what that picture was about. I don't know how useful or not um, the information, the copy that you provide within an Instagram post is. However, I just find that writing is another um, creative outlet for me. And so if I could provide some level of information within that caption, as opposed to just kind of something really short and simple, occasionally I go that route. The following thing that I have on my list is invest in a few floral tools. The first thing that I invested in when it came to tools was my snips. The first kind that I bought were kind of a generic brand. I bought them at Michael's. I still have them till this day and I use them to cut chicken wire now. They work amazing. They are very durable and they work great. So I still love them. However, to cut stems, I think there's a lot better quality uh, snips. And so I definitely switched it up on that end. Maybe investing in a couple of different base types, um, whether it be glass or ceramic or any kind of different material that you want to offer when it comes to your designs would be really helpful, not only for you to know how much product it takes, but also what materials you want to experiment and create your designs with. I create my floral arrangements with chicken wire mostly. You might want to use chicken wire, you might want to buy foam, you might want to buy auger wool or like there's a ton of different materials out there when it comes to how to create your floral arrangements and give them that water source that they need. The next thing that I have here is to register your business. You will want to register your business at some point. I started my Instagram account before registering my business and I didn't register it until maybe like two or three months after. However, I did predate the date that I had started my Instagram account because I was already investing in vessels, in material, in different wrapping paper to create floral arrangements and floral bouquets in. And so I think that was very helpful when it came to tax time and being able to write certain things off. Registering it will not only allow you tax write-offs or whatnot, but it will also give you as a floral designer, as a florist, the best pricing um, wholesale wise. And even if you're not buying wholesale, say you're not buying 12 vases or 24 vases or whatnot, even that one vase that you buy, you're not paying taxes on, which saves you a few dollars here and there, depending on the cost of the vase. It could be even a few cents, but all of that adds up. And if you are looking to become a profitable business at some point within a short span of time of starting your business, um, which is hopefully the idea, um, then you definitely want to register. So for example, I'm in the county of San Diego, but state of California. And so because I don't live in a specific city, that is labeled San Diego, I didn't have to register with the county. I just had to register within the city in my county, if that makes sense. It's so politic driven how businesses operate and what licenses and permits you need for which and why. But I would suggest 
doing a little bit of research if you live in California just right register with the state and then they will give you information and guide you through what the next step or where you should go get a permit or a license depending on the county that you live in the next thing that I have here is invest in yourself and in your floral business. So I definitely think it comes back tenfold when you believe in yourself and put your eggs into that basket. I think that when you are starting out and you don't have all of the answers, investing in a coaching call, in a workshop, in books, in watching YouTube videos, learning different techniques, learning and gaining different ideas of what you yourself could create is very very useful i think the first couple of things that i invested in besides floral tools besides materials vessels and bases and all of these things was my website i wanted to definitely offer my clients an easier process as to how to get me all of the information that I typically would have during a consultation call. So that was my first investment. And then the next one I think was a coaching call, a workshop. And I also invested in some sort of coaching program in order to lead me into the right direction when it came to how I wanted my business process within my floral business to go. I would totally recommend if you know of a floral coach and want to receive guidance or you trust someone within the floral industry to be that person that you can lean for for answers to definitely reach out. I also freelanced a lot and I still till this day freelance for other floral designers. If I haven't booked a certain date, specifically a weekend for example, um, and I don't have a wedding or event going on for a specific amount of time, I love to freelance. It keeps me busy, it keeps me learning, and it innovates the ideas that I come up with as well, which is wonderful as well as being able to help out the other floral designers in my community which most of the designers here in san diego are so so lovely like i'm just so lucky to be able to work with so many beautiful talented designers that i could some of them call friends so that's really cool but let me know if you have any questions about anything that i mentioned here this is my first sit down chit chatty videos so i know it's maybe all over the place who knows how it'll turn out once i edit but um i hope you enjoyed i hope you found some of this useful and if you have any questions as i mentioned um please leave them down below i would love to either answer in detail or create a video in relation to that topic in more detail so I hope to see you here soon. I make videos every Sunday and I occasionally post on Wednesdays as well. And floral shorts are a bonus. So I will see you next Sunday with either a vlog or a chit chatty video. And I hope to chat with you in the comments. I got married in August of 2022. 21? 21. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Don't even remember. Good lord. Yeah, but we made eye contact and like, yeah, I got embarrassed. <laughs> uh, it wasn't our neighbor, was it? No, it was like some girl walking her dog. Okay, I'm gonna keep filming.